cry for death. <laughs> Welcome back everyone to another Cobra Kai video and today we are going to be going over the entire story of Miguel Diaz. Diaz? 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 Wait, I've never actually said that out loud before. The rise and the fall of Miguel Diaz. So let's take it back to season one when Miguel got the absolute shit beat out of him by Kyler and his homies. At this stage Kyler was just a complete bully and Miguel was just so weak and had no knowledge of any form of fighting, he was just useless. But Johnny was there to beat the absolute shit out of these kids, while Miguel just stood and watched. But Miguel's beef with Kyler does not end there because in episode three of season one, at the Halloween disco, Kyler and his same friends from before beat up Miguel, but in this time, it's just, it's horrible. Johnny isn't there to save him, of course, and they just absolutely grind and pound Miguel, and he just gets destroyed very badly hurt. And at this point he has started training at Cobra Kai with Johnny, but he still is just complete shit. So, yeah, he didn't do too well in this fight. But it's so weird going back and just thinking about these times when Miguel got beat up so easily, because now, and we will get to the, you know, the now, but now he is the ultimate warrior. Not the ultimate warrior, but an ultimate warrior. Yes. In episode 5, Miguel got beat up again, but this time it was by Aisha, who was the second student to join Cobra Kai, which was slightly embarrassing, you know, that whole stigma of getting beat up by a girl has always been around, and it's always been something to be embarrassed about, but I'll tell you what, back in my kickboxing days, there was this girl called Katie. If you're out there, I don't know if you're still doing kickboxing, but I hope you are because you're a fucking machine. I still remember squaring up to her to spar. I was like, I'll take it easy on you. <laughs> don't worry, I don't, I don't want to hurt you too bad because you're a girl. I'm not, I'm, I'll take it easy on you. And she was like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? I'm going to beat the shit out of you. I'm going to shit. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, let's, let's bring it then, come on. And then I caught the cleanest roundhouse kick to my chops and I was putting my ass. And just the, the feeling of that was, ugh abysmal. I was like, holy shit. And not only that, another time that we sparred, she winded me by giving me a stiff kick, like right to the solar plexus, which was horrendous. Like that, ugh. still just thinking about that feeling of getting a solid boot to your stomach area. It's the most disgusting feeling. Like it's nearly as bad as getting kicked in the balls because the wind just gets taken clean out of you. You're just there like struggling to breathe. It's oh, awful. So a girl did this to me, and I was like, just taken well back, but that showed me from a young age that females are also complete badasses as well, you know? Never be like, oh, you're a girl, so you must be weak, like, no, no. And that is what Cobra Kai has also done a good job at showing us, with the likes of Samantha, Tori, that new girl in Cobra Kai, um, Aisha in season one. But finally, Miguel has his first fight where he actually wins, and it's against Kyler once again, but this is just for like the perfect revenge. You know, Kyler has been bullying him for so long now, but finally Miguel knows enough and he's learnt enough to stand up to Kyler and to win against him as well. So Kyler was making fun of Samantha in front of the entire cafeteria and Miguel was not having any of it. He stood up to him and kicked his ass using what Johnny had taught him. Not only that, he single-handedly beat the shit out of Kyler's friends as well so honestly like Miguel just became such a beast in this one scene but just like we saw with Hawk when you're a part of Cobra Kai something might get inside of you that shouldn't be there this piece of boldness of badness is always inside these Cobra Kai students and that gets released um, with Miguel in a scene where Miguel actually pushes Robbie but he accidentally hit Samantha at the same time. So this is the point where we're like, hang on. Okay, Cobra Kai might be a little bit too violent here. It might be having a little bit of a bad influence on Miguel. So let's move on now to the All Valley Tournament, the first one in season one, which took place in episode 10, where Miguel actually made it to the final of the All Valley Tournament by beating last year's winner. So at this point, he has shown us that he is a great fighter now. Like Johnny really turned him from a fucking dweeb, an absolute dingus, into a beast incarnate. So the final was Miguel versus Robbie, and Miguel ends up getting the job done 
and he beat Robbie to win the All Valley Tournament. However, Miguel did fight a bit dirty. So, yet again, we saw that bad side to Cobra Kai coming out in this fight, that dirty side, so it wasn't the cleanest win, but it's a win nevertheless. Doesn't matter how you get the job done, it just matters if you get the job done. And Robbie even offered to help Miguel up as well. So, this is interesting as well to see back to this, because Robbie was the respectful one, and Miguel was the disrespectful one, whereas now in Season 4, Robbie is the disrespectful one, and Miguel is the respectful one. Very turnsy tabley. So let's go ahead and move into Season 2, where Miguel gets into a fight with Hawk, in a game where they had to take each other's headband off, and this was pretty insane because they were previously best friends, but they showed that they are not holding back, you know, with these sort of games. You know, whether it's just, just a game, whether it's a tournament, whether it's a, a spar in the dojo, whether it's whatever, they are going to beat the shit out of each other. And now we move to the infamous high school fight at the end of season 2. So Miguel fights Robbie during the high school brawl and loses in tremendous fashion when Robbie kicks him over the railing, busting his back. This was hard to watch. Just seeing Miguel crunch against that railing was a little bit. <laughs> and even though it was hard to watch, it was one of the best scenes of the entire show. 100 million percent. But now we move into season 3, where Miguel is back to square one. Well, before square one, actually. It's like he's a baby again, because he needs to relearn how to walk, how to obviously fight again eventually. And Johnny does help him to do this. Miguel did snap at Johnny, though, and said he was done with karate before... Johnny got through to him, so Miguel really had a wake-up call from that high school fight, and he was like, fuck this, I am not risking my life for this bloody Cobra Kai shite, like, I am out. But Johnny was like, no, you're a fighter, you're a true Cobra Kai warrior, and you are gonna beat this man, you're gonna get out of that bed, and you're gonna grab your phone over there, and then Miguel nearly dies once again. <laughs> Oh, shit. Further on into season three, Miguel got himself into another fight with Kyler and is losing until he remembers what Johnny said and he absolutely destroys him. So at this point, Miguel has, you know, got his flow back, got his motions back. He's into karate once again and he can do things once again. He's not just an absolute vegetable, you know. So let's move on now to season four, the most recent season of Cobra Kai. And let's just have a talk about what Miguel went through in this season. Starting off with... The season four, the episode four of season four ending when Miguel backs out of a fight with Cobra Kai by setting them up to be soaked by the sprinkler and Johnny hates this because it's a Miyagi-Do move and everything Johnny taught Miguel is starting to slip away and Daniel is pretty much taking over with his teaching ways. You know, at this point, Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fine Karate have joined forces to go against Cobra Kai, but there is a conflict with LaRusso and Lawrence. Obviously, there always is. I mean, come on now. So they're both, both of their fighting styles coming together. It's not really working out, you know. And Johnny sees Miguel becoming a Miyagi-Do student more than an Eagle Fang student. But nevertheless, they do end up working together after all, and they sort of just teach the kids both of their styles at the same time, because Cobra Kai actually learnt Miyagi-Do due to Robbie, so they had both of their styles going into the tournament, so, you know, obviously, uh, Eagle Fang and Miyagi-Do had to sort of combine their styles as well for the tournament, and let's talk about it then, the All Valley Tournament, the second one, which was the ending of Season 4, which is the best tournament so far, even though there's only been, like, two, I mean, even still, this tournament was just next level, compared to the first one in season one. So Miguel won his qualifying match with minimal effort because he's already a beast. He is the reigning, defending, undisputed uh, All-Valley champion from last year. So he done a very good job with the qualifying match to get to the finals. And then he went on to win the quarterfinal, which wasn't a surprise either. He is showing us that he is still an absolute beast. He is showing us that his recovery process has been very, very good. And he's pretty much back to where he belongs. HOW DARE YOU TURN OFF ON ME, BOY! You need to get your head out your backside and get real! Anyways, as I was saying, yes, we see that Miguel pretty much is back to where he belongs with karate. He's an absolute champion, he's an absolute beast incarnate. And he's gonna do whatever it takes to win. So then we get to the semi-final, which is against Eli, aka Hawk. And at this point, these two are friends again. They both became good and 
you know, they're on the good side, they're on the same team, sort of. I mean, they're not really on the same team though, because Eagle Fang and Miyagi though are still different, even though they're using each other's tactics, like they're still friendly. They're allies, yeah, they're alliances within the tournament. So when I was watching this semi-final match take place, I was very, very intrigued to see which way it was gonna go, because it was very unpredictable. Miguel and Hawk are both absolute beasts. You know, we've seen them rise up from nothing at the start of season one to the point now where they're just menaces at karate, absolute menaces. So I was very, very skeptical on who was gonna win this one. And it looked to be Miguel when he set off the good old spin kick. He jumped up higher than he's ever jumped before. He went for the spinner only 5,000 and then Miguel was a broken man all of a sudden. Some muscle got yanked, some muscle got pulled. I don't know where it was exactly, but he was screaming in agony as he lay there on the mat, just defeated, defeated by his own body. So it looked like maybe the recovery wasn't fully there after all. Yes, it was a big improvement from lit literally being a vegetable at the start of season three, but some part, some ligament, some muscle, some whatever, was not having any of it and it just went. I thought it was worse as well when they did reveal later on that it was just a pulled muscle and I saw Miguel standing up, I was like, okay, okay, maybe he can go back and fight again. But he does not. He listens to his body and he just sits this competition out, you know? He goes, there's always next year, Mr. Johnny Lawrence, even though Johnny wanted him out of there. Well, out there. And they had this whole like dramatic countdown as well. And I was like, oh, obviously Miguel's gonna come out on the very last second and the crowd's gonna go, yeah, la, 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 la. And it's gonna be this real like, Miguel's gonna be like, <sighs> but no, unpredictably enough, Miguel just doesn't come out. So that's it for Miguel in the All Valley Tournament. And that is it for the story of Miguel so far. At the end of the season, he actually leaves to go and find his dad. So we'll see how that goes in season five, but it looks like Miguel will be taking a back foot on karate then. Hawk went on to win the tournament, which was great, but just seeing Miguel leave like that was very sad. Um, I didn't really want him to win though, since he did win last year. I wanted Hawk to get that win. Um, or Robbie, like I would have maybe been all right with Robbie winning. Although, I don't know. Like see this new Cobra Kai, I fucking love them because they're just so, they're such great heels. If you know wrestling, you know what I'm talking about here. Cobra Kai are the ultimate heels, right? They're the bad guys. And I love that. And I love what Robbie became with season four. But Hawk definitely deserved the win though. So I think Hawk's redemption story was a lot more important than Robbie's. I think Robbie maybe should win the next one, but we'll see. And judging by the end of season four, Robbie will become one of the good guys again in season five because he realized what he had been doing was very wrong and he gave his dad a good old hug and was like i'm sorry papa for what i've done to you for what i've done to my karate team for what i've done to myself i am a failure i need to change for the better and he will i know he will and so will tori as well judging by the end of season four as well. I'm gonna do a video where I talk about season five and what to expect because we can predict a lot of things from how season four ended. But nevertheless, that was it for the story of Miguel rising from nothing to an absolute beast, winning the All Valley Tournament, taking on everyone, being a true Cobra Kai, and then sort of falling back down again. This was a rise and fall situation which is unfortunate to say, but it is true. So drop a like on the video for me if you've enjoyed this one. Subscribe if you're new for more Cobra Kai videos. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.